What's going on YouTube? When it comes to large body on frame SUVs, there is one model that has consistently stood above the rest, especially in terms of sales and market share. That of course is the Chevy Tahoe, which was also just fully redesigned last year. But there are always new rivals knocking at the door, and today we have the newest one, the 2023 Toyota Sequoia. Finally redesigned after a very long-lived previous generation, this next-generation Sequoia is coming out swinging with a standard hybrid powertrain and high-end capstone model. But is it enough to take down the king of the segment? Let's go ahead and find out. Now before we get into it, let's discuss the pricing and equipment levels. In this comparison, we are using the fully loaded examples of each which means the high country model for the Tahoe. With four wheel drive, the premium package, destination, and the general price increase for 2022, the total price comes in at $81,900. Moving to the Tahoe, we have the new capstone model, which takes Sequoia to a level of luxury and price it's never seen before. Since there are no additional options to add after selecting the top model, the price is still less than the Tahoe, at $79,795 after destination. We will account for the small difference in prices later in the video, but for now, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video with the exteriors. Big SUVs tend to have big and bold designs, and that's certainly the case for these two. The new Tahoe continued its signature look with a large barbed grille and lots of chrome when you pick the high country. The new Sequoia doesn't bear hardly any resemblance to its predecessor, but it does build off the new design language started by the Tundra pickup. For capstone duty, it too has a large chrome grille, except with a mesh design. Both grilles are punctuated by full LED headlights, however only the Toyota has premium sequential turn signals and also LED fog lights. Heading on around, both will throw in large 22-inch alloys, which look nice against the large and boxy side profiles. The rear designs are also boxy and tough looking, but there is a lot more to set them apart when it comes to the details. The Tahoe has stacked taillights that are mostly incandescent, as opposed to the Toyota's, which uses horizontal rear lighting that is entirely LED. But on the flip side, the Chevy's hidden rear wiper is a premium element, and the quad exhaust tips stand out versus the hidden ones on the Sequoia. Now moving past the design choices, both SUVs are loaded with features, like mirrors that heat, fold, auto dim, and include blind spot monitoring. And as far as all the other safety systems, Toyota gives you every system as standard equipment on all trims, which is something the Tahoe does not do. However, once you get to this top-end model with the optional premium package, they both have everything, including adaptive cruise control. Next, we have the warranties, where they have the same coverage besides for Toyota including longer complimentary maintenance. Finally, towing is very important for SUVs like these, and the Sequoia can actually tow about 10% more, at just under 9,000 pounds as equipped. Anyway, that's the end of the exterior comparison, so now let's get to the super luxurious interiors before we take them out for a drive. So walking up to the vehicles, both are obviously going to have smart entry systems with the ability to remote start. However, the Sequoia does require a remote services subscription to keep remote start after the trial period expires. On the flip side, it's the Tahoe that does not have sensors behind the door handles to unlock, and both of them have power deploying running boards. Now checking out the interiors themselves, they have radically different designs. The Tahoe's mocha leather cabin has an upscale kind of country design to it, while the Sequoia's black and white leather cabin has more of an urban chic design. As far as the seats themselves, they are both heated and ventilated with memory functions, but otherwise they are quite different. The Sequoia has more adjustments since it includes power thigh extension, 
and it also has higher end semi and lint leather, which is basically straight off a of Lexus. Now as far as the broader interior materials, both dress to impress and have appointments more in common with luxury nameplates. Across both upper and middle dashboards, you'll find leather coverings, along with wood accents and stitching patterns that break up the space. Overall, they seem pretty much equivalent. Now after startup, you'll find full digital gauge clusters on both, thanks to a 2022 update on the Tahoe. Both are vivid, crisp, and customizable, plus they have head-up displays if you don't want to look at them. Of course, it pretty much goes without saying that both have heated, leather-wrapped steering wheels with power adjustment. Now the next major area to evaluate is interior storage, where both of them are very large. However, Tahoe seems to maximize the space best because its center console and front storage areas are both larger. The reason for that is probably that the Tahoe has a push button shifter mounted out of the way, while Toyota keeps a traditional one. Regardless of how you may feel about that, both display multi-view 360 degree camera systems when in reverse. Alrighty, that brings us to the audio systems, so let's give them a sample. Both are nice sounding systems, but for whatever reason, the Bose system seems to have the more robust sound. Now moving on to the screens, these are obviously central points of the interiors, especially in the Toyota's case since it's 14 inches large. That's about 4 inches larger than the Chevy's for those of you keeping track. Both of them are also running brand new software for 2022, Android based in the Tahoe, and Toyota in-house designed for the Sequoia. Overall, both the performance and graphic quality are better in the Toyota, though both of them will have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Finally, ending the front areas, both have rear camera mirror systems and large power panoramic moonroofs. But since these are giant three-row SUVs, there's still a lot to talk about in the rear areas of the cabin. Even with new packaging, the Tahoe continues to offer a legroom advantage, even though headroom is basically the same. The features are also largely the same, both having their own climate controls, heated rear seats, and tons of connections for devices. However, the capstone includes a feature even the Cadillac Escalade doesn't have, and that's ventilated rear seats. Sequoia also has rear window sunshades, but only the Tahoe seats can slide. Moving on to the next row of seats, we see more significant differences. Crucially, the Tahoe rides on an independent rear suspension, which is something the Sequoia does not. That means, even though the legroom number is competitive with the third row seat slid all the way back, the reality is Sequoia feels a lot more cramped. The higher floor reduces thigh support and headroom. The same situation plays out in the rear, after opening their foot-activated tailgates. The independent rear suspension and lack of battery packs allows the Tahoe to deliver more space across all three configurations. But it's still a tight race at this point, so now let's take them out on the road. 
Now these two have been very different throughout this video, so it shouldn't be surprising that it applies even more so out on the road. For engines, the Tahoe stays with the tried and true 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8, making 420 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque. The Toyota, on the other hand, goes with a twin turbo V6 hybrid system, the first in its class. It delivers stellar numbers that exceed the Tahoe, 437 horsepower and 583 pound feet of torque. a little bit of a hill. So uh, with this Sequoia, I think one of the biggest and most important things to note about it is the fact that you have the iForce Max powertrain, the hybrid powertrain, standard equipment. Yeah. So unlike the Tundra where you have the, look, the uh, smaller naturally or 3.5 twin turbo without the uh, hybrid system, this one is the best you can get and it's standard on all the trims including the SR5 base model so that's certainly a very nice thing to see and you get all of that power 437 horsepower 583 pound feet of yeah. torque <laughs> yeah and if you're keeping tabs on that that is going to be more than even the upgraded engine in the Chevy Tahoe <laughs> So you can probably tell what's underneath the hood. Uh, I think Mason mentioned it uh, a little earlier on the exterior, but it was a little preview of another, um, you know, 2022 change that I think is a pretty cool one, and that's expanded availability of the mighty 6.2 liter yeah. V8. So this is 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque, just like it is in many, many General Motors products, and now you have it. As an option. <laughs> it just elevates the experience to make it feel more like an Escalade. You know, um, we had the Escalade loaner a few weeks ago, and the 6.2 just blends into your life. It's an amazing engine. It sounds fantastic, as you can hear. Um, it has a lot of power, and I'm just so happy to see that thrown in on this model. Without any official measurements, 0 to 60 times feel roughly equal to each other. As far as the transmissions are concerned, both have 10-speed automatic transmissions that are nice and responsive. <laughs> and that is a fast and responsive 10-speed automatic transmission. Um, this is across the entire Tahoe range, once again, no matter which trim level or engine you choose. And it's a really, really excellent transmission. We've driven it in, of course, this week with the Tahoe, the Escalade, Silverado, Sierra, <laughs> all those applications yeah. is just excellent because it's even in some of the Ford products as well, which is funny, but uh, it's just really excellent because it has so much responsiveness. When you put your foot down, you can drop sometimes as many as four gears that, to give you that power immediately, and then, you know, it's constantly shifting, but it's so smooth you can't even feel it. I, I really don't have anything bad to say about this transmission during this yeah. week of testing. <laughs> this is really quick. <laughs> well, it just it pulls so hard. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sound level reader went flying. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have to <laughs> tame it down there. <laughs> so the other nice thing about this uh, powertrain combination is certainly this 10-speed automatic transmission. When you put your foot down, shifts are lightning fast. It'll drop several gears at once, um, you know, and otherwise when you're just driving around in a more casual manner, like most people will be doing, um, it's nice and smooth as well. Right. But perhaps as important as power is ride quality. Our Sequoia uses adaptive dampers and a rear air suspension, while our Tahoe has GM's excellent magnetic ride control. 
But guys, I won't keep you waiting longer. We need to talk about the ride quality for the Sequoia because that is really the point of a big three row like this is you need to haul around your family. You want to go on family vacations and enjoy the ride experience. So let's go ahead and talk about that. And I'm very happy to tell you that this is awesome ride quality in the Sequoia. We've been nothing but impressed in our um, you know, drive so far this morning. This is a really good riding vehicle. First of all, the seats are really comfortable. Second of all, the suspension is tuned really nicely. Um, you have an adaptive variable suspension. You also have a rear air suspension. Um, so all of that put together really gives you one of the best ride qualities in the entire segment. All right, but let's go ahead and talk about your ride quality for the Tahoe. Now, of course, uh, when you buy something like this, it's the expectation that it rides well. And, of course, the Tahoe delivers. I mean, it does such a good job of soaking up the bumps. Um, it's just, it's incredible, guys. If you haven't been in one of these uh, recently, it just does such a good job of soaking up the bumps. You have really soft seats. We don't have the optional full air suspension. But even so, the Tahoe holds the slight edge for comfort and body control. And as far as sound insulation, we tested both of them on decently smooth roads at 55 miles per hour, and they returned nearly identical numbers. 57.2 decibels, guys. Fifty-seven point nine is what we're sitting at for the sound level reader. That is a really good reading, guys. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the Tahoe tested at. You have to maybe go see that or watch our comparison video. <laughs> of course, get on the gas hard, and the Tahoe returns a wonderful V8 growl, and the Sequoia a convincing V8 imitation. Other times, at low speeds, the engine will be completely off in the Toyota, and the transitions are very smooth when that happens. I do want to mention, of course, being a hybrid model, um, <laughs> you do have the ability to drive around you know, with the engine off a decent amount. You know, we got very excited about the power, but you know, under 18 miles per hour, the engine can be off um, and let the electric motor do some stuff if you're just lightly driving around town or like a parking lot down a hill. Of course, um, as we talked about though, power really is kind of the primary focus of this system. So unlike a Prius or a RAV4 hybrid, the engine will run more than that because you need to get this big beast moving. Finally, when it comes to fuel economy, the hybrid Sequoia has not yet been officially rated. However, in the real world, our highway drive returned an average of 25 mpg, which makes me feel comfortable saying that the Toyota will beat the Chevy in this area. And last but not least, we have to revisit the pricing and discuss value. Now our Tahoe was $2,105 more expensive than the Sequoia, so we will award a quarter point per thousand dollars of difference, or a half point to the Toyota. Well guys, that's where we're going to wrap up this comparison video. Obviously these two are both excellent giant SUVs, and each one has a specific set of very strong areas. Make sure to let us know in the comments below which one you would pick. And thanks for joining us for another Car Confections comparison. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more comparisons, as well as our signature full review videos and all things related to large SUVs and trucks. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there.